Okay, so I did a video on replacing a brake caliber and I had uh, a couple of good questions about how uh, much force a person should have to put to spin the rotor after the caliper has been replaced. There's the caliper on this vehicle, here's a rotor. Um, I don't really think I showed it too well in that video because I had at one point jacked uh, the, the front of the vehicle and it was in neutral, but to do that you got to really uh, uh, make sure everything is blocked up around you know both sides of the vehicle and everything. So I'm doing a little other work on this vehicle, but I'm going to try to see if I can get the idea across here. At the moment, I have the brakes operated on this vehicle. So you see here, I'm trying to put as much force on it as I can, and obviously I can't turn this rotor. Now, even once I release release the uh, the brakes. Because I have uh, I have a little system geared up there to just uh, put some pressure on the brake while I'm testing it. I'm going to remove the force on the brake, and now I'm not going to be able to spin this because the other wheel is not jacked up. But hopefully you'll be able to get an idea because here's the pads down here, right in there, and like I said, this rotor is immovable but I'm just gonna release the brake and try this again. Okay so now I've released the brake and see that move? So so basically the pad should fully retract in here in the caliper. Caliper should have no tension on this. You notice I can turn that very easily now. I can just take my fingers on the on the rotor itself here, right? So that's basically what should be happening if the rotor is operating properly. Now like I say, if I had the other side of the vehicle jacked up in neutral, then I could spin this. But uh, for the time being, hopefully that will answer any of these questions.